Welcome to the show you're watching Tech24, I'm Julia Seeger. From camouflage science to the development of stealth technology, we explore how the properties of light can be changed to trick your eye into thinking an object is no longer there. And in Test24, we try Adoc, a smart projector that is the perfect solution to make sure that all your meetings are now productive and fun. But first, we've all thought about what we'd do if we were invisible for the day. And now it seems that the well-worn fantasy isn't quite as absurd as it once was. A number of companies around the world are developing technology that gives the effect of invisibility. But it's the military and not civilians getting first dibs. Our colleagues at France, too, have this report. Appearing, then disappearing in an instant. The power of invisibility has long been a cornerstone of science fiction, from the invisible man in his white bandages to Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. But that seemingly impossible dream is more tangible than ever before. And this sheet, designed by a group of Canadian engineers, could be at the heart of it. Pass behind it, and you appear to vanish. The magic ingredient, a new transparent material that lets you play with how light is refracted. And the further away the slab, the better the illusion. The technology is getting a lot of attention. It's a really impressive step forward. Everything depends on what people end up doing with it. What would you do if you were invisible? I'd use it to break into banks to get money. There aren't currently any plans afoot to apply this new material to day-to-day -day life. Instead, it's the army that's getting the first chance to road test what could be the ultimate camouflage. And it's becoming a crowded field. This French business is working on a different approach, a project called Chameleon. Sensors analyze the colors of a vehicle's surrounding environment and replicate them in real time, an exciting innovation that is still a long way away. The vehicles can tackle any terrain, which means they'll get splattered, they'll get covered in mud. There's rain to contend with, extreme temperatures, which means the materials and equipment we use need to be able to resist these sorts of environments, which can be pretty challenging. There's a long way to go before these techniques become a part of military hardware. Until then, engineers are thinking of other potential uses, like hiding unsightly objects in the countryside, or even covering bins in the street. Now, animals from all walks of life have been manipulating their colors for a variety of reasons since the beginning of time, and it's actually a huge part of Darwin's natural selection. To talk more about it, I'm now joined on set by Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello, Dan. Hello, Julia. You're going to tell us more about the chameleon. How does he uh, use his skin to change colors? Well, animals like chameleon appear to change colors thanks to the presence of uh, photonic crystals in their skin. It's an array of photonic crystals that diffract specific wavelengths of light. And because each wavelength corresponds to a specific color, it appears as if the chameleon is changing color. Now, the color change also depends on the distance between these photonic crystals. And it varies uh, as and when the skin either tightens or it relaxes. Now, um, scientists from Emory University, they have developed a thin flexible structure with photonic crystals that uh, react to light and heat. And as you can see here, it also appears to change its color. And then there are other types of camouflage techniques, uh, one of which is the use of light-powered nanomachines. Well, yes, uh, scientists from the University of Cambridge have developed an artificial skin uh, whose material consists of tiny gold-coated particles in a polymer shell that are squeezed into uh, tiny water drop droplets in oil. Now, as you can see here, this uh, particular arrangement, it changes color from brown to red. So when these gold uh, particles or the skin is subjected to heat or light, the polymer tends to expel water and you see it turns into uh, brown color. But when it is cooled, it retains the water and there's a spring-like action. And you see when it retains water, we see the color red. Now, there's another type um, of, of camouflage, and that's when creatures actually change their shape. And when it comes to that, sea creatures are probably the most impressive. Well, yes, uh, these invertebrates uh, are called cephalopods, and some of the examples are octopus, uh, squid, octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish. And they are able to change their shapes 
because of the presence of uh, projections on their skins and they are uh, able to control these projections so they can turn in, into uh, tall spikes or small bumps depending on their surroundings and they can easily blend into uh, those surroundings. Now scientists have uh, taken inspiration from these creatures uh, to develop stretchable 2D objects that can be morphed into 3D objects. Dan and Jake Hadlecar, thank you very much indeed for that. You'll be back in just a few moments for Test 24. Now, it's considered as the most powerful military breakthroughs in modern times. Stealth fighter jets started being developed back in the 1950s, providing the U.S. military with a dramatic competitive advantage in battle and as a deterrent to potential aggressors. These aircrafts are designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce reflection and emission of radar, infrared, visible light, but also radio frequency spectrum and audio. Well, to speak more about it, I'm now joined in the studio by Franck de Cloquement, Professor of Strategic Intelligence at the International Relations Institute in Paris. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, tell us, how does stealth technology work? Stealth technology was first conceived as a way to make it impossible to detect aircraft. In other words, by reducing whatever can be picked up by radar. So we can do that by taking into account several factors. First is the aircraft's design. Then there's the energy output, especially the heat produced by the reactors. There's also the type of material used to cover the plane. And finally, the so-called electronic counter measures employed within the plane itself to counter effects used to detect it by the enemy. So what are the latest developments? We're seeing pictures here, the latest developments in the aerospace industry when it comes to stealth fighter jets. Several stealth planes are currently on the market, for example the American F-35 fighter jets. Then there's the future European plane, the SCAF, still in the design phase, but which should be operational around 2040. There's also a project to replace the aging fleet of helicopters with the new Cheetah. It will almost certainly use stealth technology to help it penetrate behind enemy lines by avoiding enemy detection. Now, do stealth technology actually pose ethical problems in the eyes of international law? With regards to international law, one mustn't conflate stealth technology with artificial intelligence technologies, what I'd call attack drones. Some might call them killer drones, even though I don't agree with this expression, because these are armed drones that respect the same rules of engagement that regular armies follow on the ground. Stealth technology is more general, more wide-ranging. It allows us to encompass planes in a kind of net that that allows it to be, in a way, invisible and harder to detect. That makes the plane and its pilot less vulnerable. Now, Frank, are there any counter technologies that can actually negate the effect of stealth technology? Some radars can indeed negate the stealth technology used by airborne objects. The French are very good at this. And so are the Americans. The trick is to determine whether or not the object detected is Russian, Chinese, a friendly or enemy plane. It must be detected at the right time to avoid friendly fire incidents. So detection is important, but so too is identification. Franck de Cloquemont, thank you very much indeed for coming on set to speak to us. We're going to move on now to Test 24. It's a smart projector called Adoc that turns any surface into a touch surface and it promises to make any business meeting much more fun than it can be. I didn't want to believe in that, but it's actually pretty impressive, Dan. How does it work? Well, this tactile technology is based on image recognition. Uh, the projector, it has an LED, an infrared LED, and also an infrared camera. This camera scans the surface on which the light is projected 50 times per second. So when something touches the surface, the camera is able to uh, capture this uh, particular object. And with an uh, in-house algorithm, uh, it can analyze the shape, the movement, and even the time for which the object is uh, touching the screen. Now that's very important because then it uh, uh, allows us to choose different options. And this uh, information is sent to the Windows 10 computer which is embedded in this uh, device uh, within 30 milliseconds. And this information has the X, Y coordinates. So then the computer can determine whether it's a click 
or whether it's a slide. Now, as you explain this, maybe uh, the founder is actually here on set with us. Paul Peretti is going to uh, show us, do a demo for us uh, so that we can understand a little bit better, Dan. Keep on telling us about it. Well, yes, this company, I'll talk more about the company, Adoc. Uh, it's based in Paris. It was founded in 2016, and uh, it it is manufacturing this uh, particular device in collaboration with Toshiba and it's made in France. And there are multiple applications uh, for uh, architects, uh, for engineers involved with construction right. plans. And here you see... Right, it's not a meeting where you're going to have 10 people around the table. You can only have about two, I think, or to seven people, right? Right. And there's one more uh, thing I should mention is that this projection is on an area of uh, 40 inches. So right now, that's the standard that they have uh, adopted. It really looks like the minority report. It's very interesting. Thank you very much indeed for that, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. It brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24, but you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.